My name's Melanie Barker. I'm the project manager here for London Underground at the Kennington Shafts. Um, I work on the Northern Line Extension project. I'm an ICE chartered member. Um, I've been a graduate for a few years um, and then I took my chartership a couple of years ago. Since then I've sat on the ICE inspiration panel and I was also a president's apprentice to Jeff French a couple of years ago, which was really fun. So I've had quite a large involvement with the ICE um, and I believe it's really important to try and pass on knowledge to the next generation. Um, I'm really proud of being an engineer. I love the fact that this is going to be here for longer than I'm going to be alive. This is going to be a legacy that we leave. This is something that I'm proud of being part of. And I also love tunnelling, so I'd love to explain a little bit more about what we do here on this project and at the Kenningtons for the Northern Line Extension. So the Northern Line Extension is an extension of the Charing Cross branch from Kennington to a new station at Nine Elms and a new station at Battersea Power Station. So what we're doing is we're actually extending that Charing Cross branch off to Battersea Power Station which is really important because that part of London is obviously undergenerated and it's allowing the whole generation of the Nine Arms area along the South Bank to happen. And we form a really vital part of that, giving that transport link. So we've had to provide two new stations um, and two new tunnels as well. And we're currently standing in what will be the southbound tunnel. As I said before, we connect on at Kennington Loop, which is an old part of the Northern Line, built 100 years ago. The trains currently turn in the loop, so it's not a passenger part of the railway. The trains currently turn and go back up to Charing Cross to, con to continue their journey. And is what we're doing is we're joining on to that, we're connecting to the railway with something called a step plate junction, which is where we build a tunnel around the old tunnel. We take the tunnel down and we form that new railway junction around it. So drivers at the moment come out of Kennington Station go straight into Kennington Leap and turn back to Charing Cross. But we're actually going to put a new junction in the railway so they're allowed to spur off now down to Battersea Power Station, which will form the new extension. So it means people will be able to get on at Battersea Power Station and go all the way through to Charing Cross, which will be really great. And a new addition to the new tube network since the Jubilee Line extension. So it's a really great new extension and will hopefully pave the way for future extensions as well. Hello, I'm Jonathan Cooper and I'm a chartered civil engineer and I'm a project manager here working at the Battersea site where we're building a new station for London Underground and also delivering two new tunnels which will join up with the existing Northern Line at Kennington um, to form the Northern Line extension. Behind me we've got the tunnel boring machines, these are named Helen and Amy and they will start digging towards the Kennington Loop to form the running tunnels for the Northern Line extension. Uh, here we have the business end of the two TBMs, where we have the cutting face. So the TBM here is Helen and the TBM over here is Amy. The cutting head rotates um, as we push the TBM forward through the London clay with some hydraulic rams which push against the rings which have just been built. As the TBM rotates it will cut into the London clay and the clay will go into the face of the TBM. So once the TBMs are lifted into the crossover box, um, the gantries for the TBM will be lifted in after it and we'll have the TBM launch. So to, the TBM along with its gantries is about 100 metres long and it's essentially a mobile factory which is tunnelling through the London clay and building a tunnel behind it. My name's Michael Lawless, I'm a graduate member of the ICE currently working towards charter status and here we're standing in front of the Battersea crossover box. This is where the TBMs uh, will be launched next month and then one following the month afterwards. My role on this project is as an assistant project manager, tunnels and shafts, uh, working with Jonathan Cooper um, to, to prepare for the launch of the TBMs. So I've been working specifically with um, launch tunnels down at the eastern uh, wall of the crossover box. These are 80 metre spray concrete lining tunnels that are now complete and we're uh, fitting them out at the moment to receive the TBMs, which are then pushed in about 80 metres up to a headwall we've cast and then they could be launched. As the TBM rotates, it'll cut into the London clay and the clay will go into the face of the TBM. Here it gets mixed with a foaming agent, some water, to create a paste, which is then taken out through the screw up onto the tunnel conveyor system. At the tunnel conveyor system, it gets taken to the muck bin, uh, which is behind us, and then from there it gets put onto the conveyor system and the conveyor system takes it out to a barge on the river and all of our muck from the tunnelling gets taken out by river to Gosham's farm where it's used to reclaim land. Behind us we have the uh, rear of the shield of the TBM so the shield supports the ground as we tunnel through it. You can see poking out the back the screw so the muck is taken out from the face of the TBM through the screw and onto the tunnel conveyor. Inside the tail skin you can see the erector arm the erector arm takes the tunnel segments as it can manipulate through 360 degrees and put the, the segments wherever they're needed. 
So the reason we're using tunnel boring machines on the drive from here going forward is to essentially control settlement. We're going under uh, 3.2 kilometers of other people's property, essentially, and we want to minimize ground loss going forwards. As we push forwards, there are rings built behind, and these are grouted as soon as we push off those rings to form the next opening. So all the time it's a closed system. Because of this, it means we can reduce how much time the ground has to settle on top of the TVM. We put an accelerator in with the grout to speed the setting process. So the grout is like concrete, um, and to, let, to make it go off quickly, we had an add in an accelerator, and that enables the concrete to set, or the grout to set very quickly. The TBM is more than just the shield, which you saw earlier. Um, behind the TBM, there's another 80 meters of gantries, and these gantries are essentially like form part of a mobile factory, which uh, the shields pull along. And all those gantries uh, serve a purpose in facilitating the tunneling. So, for example, you've got the control um, room of the TBM here where the drivers will sit and engineers will sit, monitoring the progress of the TBM and making decisions on exactly what to do to um, aid the tunneling. So this is our southbound tunnel on my left. This is the first one, uh, the first TBM sets off from. We're going to be putting the TBM down. It's going to be sitting on some rails and then there is a push-pull system that will push that all the way up to the head wall, about 80 metres in. From that point, we'll start bringing down all the gantries, which is the backup, it's the bit that makes it the mobile factory, and these will continue to be installed as we push forwards. Uh, we're currently stood in the bottom of Kennington Green Shaft, uh, one of two uh, shafts that serve a number of purposes. Um, it's a reception area for the TBM, uh, which is stood in front of me there, which, which will come through from its drive at Battersea. It also allows us to facilitate the works at the step plate junction. Um, so behind me you'll see spray concrete lining, which um, is 200 metres to the step plate junction, um, where we do the connection into the existing northern line. Um, the shaft also allows, in the permanent case, will be uh, a ventilation, emergency access and egress from the tunnel. Um, and there's also a basement area which will house switch rooms and power um, equipment uh, to service the new railway. But as we get further down towards the railways, you'll see we actually have to go into handworks where it's guys physically digging with spades and that's because we're so close to the operational railway. My name's Dan Bimson, I'm a tunnel engineer for London Underground and I'm a chartered member of the Institution of Civil Engineers. Now I'm standing in the step plate junction cavern for the northbound step plate junction at the Northern Line Extension site at Kennington. Uh, this is where the new Northern Line Extension Railway will connect into the existing Kennington Loop that's been there since the 1920s. So what you can see behind me is the exposed outside of the tunnel rings that have been there for 80 or 90 years. We've under dug around it and now we're digging underneath it. What we're doing is we're supporting it as we dig underneath it. What you can hear behind me right now is one of the Northern Line trains running just a few feet away from us. You can hear it, you can feel it. And what you also can hear is uh, the pneumatic clay spades that the miners are using to dig these little small headings. Now the reason we have to do that is because the headings are so small, you can't get a mechanical means of excavation in there. Now this system of uh, tunneling, using a clay spade and then supporting the ground directly with timbers, that's been used for hundreds of years. So it's a very traditional method as opposed to sort of sprayed concrete, tunnel boring machines, which are a much more recent development. So what else we've done here is where we've got the loop is we've had to support it. So it's been exposed, it could relax, we need to make sure it maintains its shape because trains are still running through it every couple of minutes. So it's very, very important that we don't disrupt the railway. So what's going to happen here next is once all of these little headings underneath the loop, the loop have been excavated, we are going to fill them with concrete so it's all supported and then we're going to build new cast iron rings up around over the existing loop here and all the way around. And then we're going to continue on digging further on than where we've done already and that's going to be a smaller diameter tunnel again outside the existing loop one of our step plate head walls and then eventually it'll step down again to the existing diameter tunnels that have been there and will remain there so over the next six to nine months we're working very hard to continue with the works here build the new rings ready for the removal of the old rings to tie in the new railway with the old we have a couple of possessions of the railway in september this year uh, 2017 where we will remove the rings and so one day the drivers will come in after we've had our possession and they'll see this entire new thing behind the lining. They have no idea that we've been building here and it'll, you know, it'll be a completely different environment for them. 
It's the first step plate junctions that we've done since the Jubilee line extension, so it's about 25 years and we don't do step plate junctions that often. They only come round every 20, 25 years. So it is quite a unique piece of tunnelling for all of us involved and it's really great for us younger engineers in particular to be involved in this because we're passing down the skills to the next generation which is absolutely vital with engineering. And it would be good in years time to come back again and look at it from a completely different perspective and you'd be like, well I contributed to this, I contributed to the regeneration of this and I contributed to you know, a, a whole new area of London really. And it's vital that we have techniques like tunnelling in London because it's such a congested city. And as you can see from above ground, there's houses and roads and schools. It's really important that without tunnelling, we wouldn't be able to build these new extensions. We need engineers in this country. The UK really, really needs civil engineers. There's a great opportunity to work on some fantastic infrastructure projects in the future, be that tunnelling or be it uh, rivers or roads or, you know, this is, this is the future. Construction is always going to be happening. We need more highly skilled, qualified people because you can, you can work on some fantastic things as a civil engineer.